Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 35 of Serendipity. This one's titled Activated. Ah, uh, yeah, just like that, you said breathlessly as your breathing rate increased. Deku placed his hands on your waist and gently walked you up against the wall so that your back was against it. Placing his hands either side of your head, like you'd seen the boys do in the anime that you two had watched, he peered at you intently with his flashing emerald eyes. How would you like me to kiss you? He asked in a low, serious tone. Your heart fluttered at the dominant tone in his voice. Like you mean it? You replied in a seductive voice. Your head lowered as you looked up at him with needy eyes. In an instant, his lips were on yours, and your lips parted and tongues danced as he reached up and pulled his face closer, his body moving closer as well as he pushed into you. You could feel the energy from his quirk surging around you both, and it was an adrenaline rush like no other. I want you, Deku said breathlessly as he pulled away from the kiss, a carnal need pulling at his being. I want you to take me right now, he replied as he reached for his hips and pulled your hips into his. Do you like this, Yin? Is this what you wanted? He asked slowly as he lowered his head towards yours again, the green lightning jumping from his body to his lips as they met yours for the second time that night. Mm, he responded as you melted into the kiss, the fervency building by the second. Izu, it's okay, you laughed and panted. That was amazing, I loved it. And I've been on the pill for a while now, so it's all good, stop worrying. He relaxed at your reassurance and pulled out of you, turning you around to him and lifting you up in a sweaty, loving hug as he turned and walked to the bed, flopping down with you still in arms. You chatted for a little bit as you lay side by side, then both got up to clean up and get ready for bed. Poor Deku was well and truly worn out after having to remain activated for an extended amount of time, especially when being intimate. That was something you'd never done before. The next day at work, the two of you seemed happier. It's amazing what a little intimacy can do to ease the tension in a relationship. Want to grab lunch today? You asked with a giant grin on your face as you poked your head into Deku's office. Of course, he replied enthusiastically. 12.30? Done, you replied, blowing him a kiss before heading into your office. He sighed happily, a dreamy grin spreading from freckled cheek to freckled cheek as he recalled last night's romp. The way that your back arched as you held on to him, had him blushing at the thought and he quickly shook his head to try and collect his thoughts and drag them, kicking and screaming, out of the smut gutter that they'd fallen into. A soft knock at the door drew his attention, and he looked up from where he'd been staring down at the paperwork before him. Todoroki, he said excitedly upon seeing the jewel-haired heartthrob standing in his doorway. Midoriya, may I have a moment of your time? Yes, yes, please come in, Deku replied, standing up and walking around his desk to shake his good friend's hand. I bought you an important item, Shoto said lowly as their hands met, his mismatched eyes trained gently on Deku. What would that be, Todoroki? Deku asked curiously. Shoto turned and shut the door behind him, letting go of Deku's hand and reaching into his pocket. He produced a navy blue fabric ring box with gold trimmings and placed it in Deku's hand. Oh, Deku replied. Thank you. I hadn't had a chance to go back to the restaurant to get it. My apologies, the night didn't go as planned, Todoroki said softly. No, 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 it's not your fault, Todoroki, Deku replied in a panic, waving his hands frantically. It was the villain that interrupted. In any case, it's disappointing that you didn't get to ask Miss Yin to marry you, the heartthrob replied slightly sadly. It's not over yet, Deku said with determination. I'm going to try again, he added firmly. I wish you all the best, Todoroki said with a slight bow. For now, I must go. I am on an important case regarding a robbery of a jewellery store in the mountains. That's terrible. I hope you catch the people responsible, Deku said sympathetically. I definitely will. Like you, Midoriya, this isn't over yet. Deku smiled. You really are amazing, Todoroki. Good luck. The handsome hero nodded politely and left the office, closing the door behind him and leaving Deku to take a quick look at the ring. It shone as he opened the box. I hope she likes it, he thought. More importantly, I hope she says yes. Just then the office door opened and Deku jumped violently and looked up at the door, slamming his finger in the ring box slid as he shut it hurriedly and jammed it in his pocket. Hey bro, a friendly voice addressed him. He relaxed when he saw who it was. Kurishima, he exclaimed. Good to see you, he added as he pulled the ring box out of his pocket and opened it to get his finger out. Kurishima's eyes fell to the box and he gasped softly as he quickly shut the door behind him. 
Midoriya, that's so manly, he said in awe. Are you going to propose to Yin? Well, yes, I'm hoping to do it soon, as my first plan fell apart and I didn't get to ask her, Deku said sadly. That's not good, Karishima replied emphatically. How are you going to propose this time around? Oh, I don't know, Deku replied truthfully. I've already tried at a beautiful restaurant, but we got interrupted by a villain. I don't know if I should do the same setting again. Maybe I should do something different. He placed the ring box back in his pocket gently and stared glumly at the floor. A super manly way would be to stay at home and cook her a home-cooked special dinner that holds all of your feelings and emotions, Karishima said enthusiastically, passionately balling his fist up and holding it up in front of his face while pulling a pained expression of heartfelt approval. Uh, I'm, I'm not a good cook, Deku said sheepishly, looking at Karishima. That's perfect then, bro. It'll prove how serious you are about her and that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone and cook with everything that you have. She'll be impressed with your manly display. You really think so? Deku asked sceptically. Definitely, Karishima replied confidently. Um, okay, I'll give it some thought, Deku replied, scrunching his brows in thought and resting his loosely balled fist on his mouth, supported at the elbow by the other hand, like he usually did when he was deep in thought about something. I actually came to talk to you about something else, but it can wait, Karishima said, seeing that Deku was now very preoccupied. Oh, are you sure? Deku asked. Yes, I'm sure. Your love mission is more important, Karishima said with a thumbs up and a big toothy smile. I'll come back another day. Uh, okay, Deku said with a smile. Thank you for your advice, Karishima. You're welcome, bro. Anytime, the bubbly spiky head replied. Let me know how you go. He added as he opened the office door to leave. Deku gave him a small wave before heading back to his desk to ponder the meal that he'd make for you. The next few days saw Deku looking up different recipes and putting together a menu. Once he had everything in place, he organised a dinner date for that weekend. I want to cook a really special meal for you, he said with an excited little bounce. Okay, he replied with a giggle. I'm always down for anything. Anything in particular that we're celebrating? You added quizzically. Uh, just how much I appreciate you and love you, he replied shyly, tugging his fringe to hide the blush. You're too cute, you know that, he replied as he reached up and wrapped your arms around his neck and kissed him on the cheek. Anything you make for me is going to be amazing, he added. He wrapped his arms around you and gave you a little squeeze of thanks. I just hope you like it, he said softly. And there ends chapter 35, stay tuned for chapter 36 coming tomorrow.